Hey guys, it's Sonia here. How are you today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. For those that are listening, this is episode 165. Um, and I know I'm switching up the routine a little bit. It's, you know, normally one heart to heart, two solo, one heart to heart, two solo. But I'm keeping you on your toes. That's exactly what I'm doing. Um, so we've got an amazing, an amazing soul with us today. Um, so thank you for joining us. This heart to heart means that you can see the video component on YouTube, or you can catch the audio only component on your favorite listening channel. And how you doing? Before we oh. go too far, how are you doing? Give yourself a quick check in. You too, Becca. We're going to come back to this. Give yourself a quick check in. Deep breath. We're going to get started. Becca, please introduce yourself. Um, my name is Becca Stone, and I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited for this conversation. I feel like we are just so aligned in our beliefs and our goals and our mission. Um, so thank you so much for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Um, my name is Becca Stone, and I'm the owner of Her Health. I am 42 years old. I have been married 16 years. I have four girls. Um, my oldest daughter is 10 years old. She has Down syndrome. And then I have triplets that are eight and a half years old. So as you can imagine, life is nonstop. It's just, you know, it's pure chaos. Um, but I have to be honest, I absolutely love it. If I didn't have them, if, you know, if that wasn't my life, I would be bored to tears. Um, and that's not a statement. So they keep me on top of it. They keep me young and just constantly in motion. Um, but yeah, so I, my mission and passion is to help women and moms get unstuck and physically transform their bodies and get back to feeling beautiful and confident and sexy in their own skin. Um, and you know, I know we're going to talk a little bit about my story and you're going to, you know, kind of guide me through that, but that is my mission and passion and what I do and just what, what I literally have been put here on this planet to do. Um, and I would love to say as a, you know, health and wellness coach that it came easily and, you know, that I've just worked out needing all the right stuff and it was easy breezy. And, but that just is not the case. Um, I've just, I've had a pretty intense story over the past, you know, 15 or 20 years. And that's what has brought me to doing what I do now. Um, and so I really just, I'm so excited to have this conversation with you because I really, I want to share my story. I want to be raw and real. There's nothing that's off limits. Um, and so I just really hope that, you know, this, this helps, even if it's one person out of your audience, I really help, hope that this just helps them, encourages them, um, and they learn something that they can take and apply immediately into their life. Yeah, um, that, okay, I guess I'm going to have to put my glasses back on. It's just, I keep on having something pop up, but in order to see it, I don't want to disconnect the the Zoom and the recording here. So, um, oh, well, I don't always have them on when I'm podcasting, but it doesn't matter. It's the age I'm at. I'm a little bit older than you. Um, my story clearly is different than you because my story, my journey is different than yours. So this is what I love, everybody. This is why Becca is here. And, and we did talk off screen. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, my schedule is off a little bit, but I believe the story is very important. I believe our conversation today is very important. For this time of year it is a couple of weeks before the busiest time of year so in theory this is the biggest time of the year let's pause for a second and, and again think about the economy think about your life think about your job think about your expectations your personal obligations this conversation is going to give you something different to think about along the way um, we're not adding more to your plate we're encouraging you to think differently about what is currently on your plate and what to do differently. How to make simple, simple switches, mm -hmm. simple integrations into your day. So stay tuned with us. Have your pen and paper handy. You know, that's what I do. Um, Right before this, 
Becca so kindly let me go and grab my tea. Um, and this morning it's green tea. And for you watching this, you know, I'm a coffee cup collector and I tell everybody to bring their water bottle or their coffee cup. And I, I have both this morning. I see Becca has her water. I have my water. This is my second bottle. I've already had coffee, but I'm feeling the sensation of stopping and sipping. I am feeling the sensation of slowing down and tea offers that to me. So ironically enough, I chose the coffee cup that Tony bought me when he was in New York. There is nothing about New York that means slowing down. Nothing. So is this a paradox to our life right now? We're getting messages in the directions of slowing down and yet being in the busiest place in the world, doing all of the things, having all of those expectations so high. Like you said, Becca, nothing's off limits. I'd love to have you carry the conversation from there and just tell me. I was seeing you nod your head. I was seeing you make some thoughts. So tell me what you think. So you're right. I mean, like, you know, one of the things that I really help my clients with is convenience because I am. I'm I'm a mom of four kids. I have a daughter with special needs that is you know, she's amazing, but it's nonstop, right? It's 24 hours a day, just making sure she's safe and watching her and, and all these things. And then I have triplets as well. So the, the, one of the biggest questions that I get asked is like, how do you do it? Like, you know, you've got these four kids and you're all over the place in sports and school and this and that, like, how do you stay in shape? How do you, you know, you must live at the gym. And I'm like, no, I move my body, but I definitely don't live at the gym. And I really adopt and teach simple, simple strategies to help busy moms and women stay on track in their nutrition without spending all day food prepping and, you know, around the clock cooking and preparing and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, and the other part of that too is, is just the expectations. I think as women and moms, like our expectations and standards for ourselves are way up here. And I think, you know, I see this with the women that I coach, like, and even myself, right. It's easier to see when other people are talking to you and, you know, it's easy to coach them through it instead of like reflect on your own expectations and, and, you know, what you have going on in your life, but we battle with perfection. We battle with needing to feel like we've done all the right things, right? I mean, how many people had all their Christmas decorations up, like before Thanksgiving came home, flipped on a switch? That is not me. Like, I'll be really honest. I still have boxes, like in my living room. I've got a ladder to my right, right? That we use to climb the trees. Ours, is, ours isn't up. Nothing yeah, is right. our outdoors isn't up. Our indoors isn't up. I have not done any baking. Yeah. I have bought other people's food to see if I want to bake something similar. So right. I started to kind of think about it, but I don't. Ha oh, and I have one present bought. Yeah, I have zero. I have I'm done. I, I, like, yeah. yeah, and you know what? Like it's okay. Like we're not. We're not gonna be able to do all the things right, you know, or, or how society has deemed them that we need to. I mean, it's just not, it's not. And, you know, for me, I always tell myself, because I have, I battled with this as my house clean or my dishes done or my is the laundry folded or my kids rooms clean, you know, and, and that doesn't equal like my self-worth or how I should feel about myself. One doesn't equal the other. And this is really my journey in health and nutrition. I grew up an athlete. I had a very strong body just easily. Like that's, that's, you know, I guess I was super active and I was really intense into sports, but this just came very naturally to me. Well, you know, fast forward, however many years I go to college, I gained 30 pounds, right? I'm like, I'm not an athlete really anymore. I'm not on a team. I like to work out and so, but it's different. And, you know, I was eating pizza and I was navigating being an independent, you know, basically kid, young adult, 18, 19, you know, building relationships, trying to meet friends. I gained 30 pounds. And I'm instantly like, oh my gosh, I'm so ashamed of my body. And I'd never been in a position where I really had to watch my food, I ate healthy and, you know, my parents cooked for me. And, but I, I, I instantly, without having that outside validation for people saying, you look amazing and you're so strong. And I was like, who am I? And I really did not, I felt undeserving of the self-love and the self-worth when my body didn't look perfect. 
like everybody had told me it had for the first 18 years of my life. And right now I can say that, and now I have all the answers to that. Then I was literally spiraling. So at 18 or 19, you know, not being able to wear your skinny jeans or not being able to go to a, you know, a date party and like, feel like you look great is literally the end of the world, right? Praise God, there wasn't like social media and all the stuff then. I can't, I literally, I can't even imagine, you know, what teenagers and young adults go through, you know, today, I mean, even adults, right? But I mean, just like when your brain is like, you can't, you can't make sense of it all. And so that was the beginning of what do I do to get immediate gratification, gratification? Like it didn't matter if it was healthy. I instantly put myself on just a very extreme diet and restricted, you know, to super low calories, 900, a thousand calories. I restricted food groups. Um, I would eat, you know, the five foods that were going to make me lean as fast as possible. I two hours a day in the gym. Um, and I got into a very, very unhealthy cycle and habit with food. Obviously then, you know, you can't maintain that diet for any length of time. I might've lost five pounds or 10 pounds, but at some point there was a breaking point, right? Like you go out and you're just so restricted. You're like, what do I do? Then you eat the thing. Then you, you know, then I would binge, right? Cause I, I had no control. I didn't know balance. And so I would binge, of course, then I would feel terrible about myself and, you know, beat myself up because what, what am I doing? I'm not measuring up to this perfection standard that I've set for myself. I've let myself down before I get to my goal, you know, yada, yada, yada. And so then it would just be me failing, beating myself up, punishing myself, and then finally working my way back up to starting again. Right. So how many times did I start over every Monday for probably 15 years? It was brutal. Um, and it's just, it's, it's absolutely physically, emotionally, and mentally devastating. And, you know, people that don't have a food thing and that don't have like the calories and the macros and the, what am I eating and who's putting sauce and blah, like that don't have that. Sometimes they don't understand. They're just like, I don't, I like, I don't get what you're going through, but there are so many women that I talk to right now, thirties, four, you know, wherever you are, whatever stage that they've been on a diet for 30 years of their life. You know what I mean? And I'll tell you, the thing is, it's absolutely devastating because, you know, everybody has the best of intentions. People don't start on a Monday and start a diet. They only start because they go, I need to make a change. I want to be healthier. I want to do the right things. But people don't know how to do it, right? And we literally set ourselves up to fail because a diet is a short-term mindset. It just is. It's not about what are we eating? How are we moving our body? Yes, we can't eat bonbons every day, right? If we want to get healthy and lose some weight. However... It is so about mindset because think about it. There has never been a time where there is more, how do you eat healthy? I mean, Instagram alone, you can go on and scroll for five minutes and get, I mean, recipe, you know, free recipes, what, like how to eat. You can go to a gym, personal trainer. There's on demand on your TV. You're not even paying for it. Somebody will train you, right? So this information has never been more available yet. No one is doing it, right? So You're not taking action. That's right. Yeah. It's all, you might take action, but it's very temporary. We might go, oh my God, spring break's coming up. Oh my gosh, I want to look great in my Christmas dress. Oh my, right? Like, but it's all short term. What happens once we go on the vacation? Well, we go, we feel amazing. We enjoy all the food. We come back and go, oh my God, how is this happening? How did, how am I right back where I started? Right? It's because we stopped doing the action that we took to get us to be healthy, to lose weight, to be fit, right? We stop because it doesn't become our lifestyle. So what I help women do is not go on a diet, not go on a plan. People will be like, where's my menu? I'm like, I'm not giving you a menu. I'm not telling you what to eat. I'll give you suggestions. I'll give you resources. I'll give you my recipes, but I'm going to, I'm going to empower you and teach you how to navigate food every single day of your life. Whether you're out to dinner with your husband, making food for your kids at a ball field, like wherever you are, because if you can only do it in your little environment, right? Monday through Friday, you're out of luck. You are out of luck because that's not life. You can't go and say, I'm never going to drink again. I'm never going to have a date night. I'm never going to go on vacation. It's just not realistic. And here's the deal. 
you cannot rely on willpower 365 days a year. You absolutely cannot. We are not built like that, nor should you have to, because I know the emotional and physical toll that that takes on you. You have to learn balance. And people are like, oh yeah, balance. No, balance is a skill. Balance is something you practice and that is, it, it's very personal and individualized. So what works for me might not work for you, right? So what I help these women do is we build solutions that work for them. So we can help create a lifestyle that aligns with their life, right? So I have a mom that has a newborn and a two-year-old and I have a 10-year-old and eight-year-old. Well, I can work out at 5 a.m. I'm up at 4.45. I do a workout before I take my girls to school because I don't know if somebody's going to wake up sick. I don't know if somebody's calling me from school. So that's what I do. That's what's great for me. But a mom that's up at night breastfeeding and up with little babies, she's not going to work out at 5 a.m., right? And that's fine. So I can't say do 5 a.m. She's like, she might do it and be accountable to me for a week or two, but that's not, that doesn't jive with her life. She's going to learn to resent that exercise because she's like, I freaking don't want to be up at 5 a.m., right? She's going to do it at nap time after she's had her coffee, she's taken her kids out, they've done, you know, she's like, now this is her time and she can look forward to it. So it's like, it's not a one size fits all. You have to create a lifestyle that you love. Why would I tell you what to eat? I want you to choose the things that you love to eat. Yes, we're going to lean into protein, but we have to eat the right stuff. But I can help you find the stuff that you love, but that will also work and fuel your body and help you meet your goals. Did I answer your perfection question? You did. You did. And it's awesome because not only did we get an opportunity to feel your passion with that because I'm sure you get a lot of feedback from women in terms of I don't have the time yeah. right and what you're addressing here is something that everybody needs to lean into and it doesn't matter your age or your stage and it doesn't matter who you're working with it's a matter of finding somebody that will help you design your life your way help you have a lifestyle you love, <clears throat> not curtail to something that is generic right. because right. it's all about sustaining and being consistent. Because when I work with my clients, um, I've had a few new clients join my group lately. And one of the things I say before, I'm like, expect to fail. Oh. And, and they're like, what? That You just don't have this conversation with anybody. You don't have this conversation with your boss at work. You don't have this conversation with your spouse because you'll kill them if they bring that up. <laughs> Seriously, right? If, if your partner were to come up to you and say, expect to fail, how would you feel? And it's going back to the feelings of the reasons as to why people want to look good. You are looking for that external validation still. What Beck is going to teach you and what you're going to learn is how to turn it around. How to look forward to those activities that make you feel good, right. whatever they are. And yes, they should be meal prepping. And yes, they should be looking at your, your, your nutrition and your energy and your emotions, as well as your movement. And, you know, we're going to talk about what Becca's um, areas look like at the closer to the end of this call. So make sure you stay tuned to that. But my point is it's a mixture of all of these things that will help you blend your perfect life. And it doesn't have to look like anybody else's. Right. So we talked about, is that the number one? Is that the number one um, feedback you get for people? I don't have time. Um, You know, maybe sometimes time. I mean, I would even say now that my clients would say, oh my gosh, I saved them a ton of time. Like I had no idea. Yeah, but before this time consuming. Um, I don't think it's, not, I mean, they do say that, right. But that's a story we tell ourselves. And I mean, that's a whole nother part of my program. It's like, what are the top three stories that you're telling yourself to hold yourself back? Right. Our brain's number one job is to keep us safe and protect ourselves. So what, are, what's the number? Uh, I'm not a morning person. Uh, you know, I'm just big boned. Uh, this is what 40 looks like, right? Like what are you drilling into your brain every single day so that you don't have to take action? So that's a huge part of my program. We strategically, you know, hold ourselves back. Right. And that's just, that's our own 
like protection mechanism. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So those are big things. The other thing is people associate losing weight in pain, right? Because think about it, like how much time you're like, oh my God, I need to do better. You're eating chips. You're like, oh my gosh, I need to lose weight. I need to do this. I need to go back to gym. How long does it actually take from when you start saying those things till you actually do it? Why? Because there's so much pain. What do we think about? We go like, well, we're not going to be able to have our wine at night. We're not going to be able to have our cookies. We're not. We focus on hyper focus on the laundry list of rules that we've given ourselves and the things that we're going to restrict, right? The best, the most freeing thing. And honestly, I didn't I didn't come to this because I just found this deep amount of love and self-worth and like aha moment. To, to get off a diet, I went through a journey of infertility and I finally got pregnant. And it took having another human in my body for me to go, oh my gosh, the way that I have been using food and the unhealthy habits that I have around food are not going to be healthy for my kid, right? And then it was at 20 weeks, I went and had an ultrasound and it was a girl. Y'all, it is by no coincidence that I have four girls. The Lord himself was like, if I do not do something big, this cycle will continue forever. And I knew I was always like calorie macros. What's on my chicken? Like I was crazy in the brain. It consumed, it took away like Mm -hmm. being present in the moment. My husband and I would be on a date. I'll never forget being at Outback you know, 15 years ago and maybe celebrating like our first anniversary. And I'm thinking, what are they doing to my food? You know, I'm like, I can't even be in this conversation. Like that's ridiculous. And so I found out I was having a girl and I said, never, ever. I made a commitment right then. I've gone back on a lot of commitments. I've said, I'll never do this as a parent. I've done them a million times, right? Like, again, we're not perfect. This, I was like, I will never body shame. I will never talk about my body. I will never call myself fat. I will never talk about dieting. And I'm telling you, I've held strong to that. I had one of my third graders come home and say, mom, how many calories are in a Coke? And I'm like, where have you heard about calories? Right? Because, and not that I'm not about teaching my kids calories, but I'm like, I don't want my kids calorie counting. Like you're eight, you know, like who's talking about that? Cause it sure as heck isn't me. And so, you know, God, and you, when you talk about like, you're telling your clients, like there is going to be a point when you fail and not even fail. You just mean like not be perfect, right? Like you're yes, not going to get this their, their right. expectation of fail because they haven't done the work yet. Right. We're right. talking about, remember guys, we're talking about people like you right now. You're, you're listening to this. You're curious. You want your life to change. You're so ready to get unstuck. And you can feel it, but you know that things haven't worked in the past. You you know, though, every time you look in the mirror, it's not working for you. And we want to change that feeling, right? What I can tell you is you have to go through that because yeah. that's what gets you to this side, right? It yes. takes, lifestyle takes practice because you're in this habit you're in this rut and this is what you do and you don't know what else to do right so you start it again but you're doing the same thing over and over expecting something else we all know that's the definition of insane (laughs) and so that's the thing I tell my people is like I had a lady ask me she goes you know I really want to coach with you but like it's going to be the holidays and I'm like it is and she's like do you even do that I mean who coaches like health and wellness through the holidays I'm like it's actually the best time. And I'll tell you why, because there's so many social events and so many obligations traveling this, that, and the other. I'm like, we get to practice. We get to practice the skill of going and enjoying your time and the practice, the skill of actually finding balance and what works for you with an accountability group which you you guys know you will always do more when you're in an accountability group and do more when you're responsible for other people, right? Than we just will ourselves. It's just, it is what it is. I hate that, but the power I do of accountability, it's powerful. And so, you know, it does, it's not a failure. What I've learned every single time, and I did deem it a failure in my book, looking back, I go, even though I failed or even though I didn't meet my goal, I wasn't perfect. I learned something new every single time I learned that worked, that didn't work. Okay. How can I tweak that? You know, becoming more aware of like, what was my emotion when I went 
you know, to my pantry and ate the food that I wasn't even wanting, you know? So, and just building that self-awareness. And I'm telling you, when you stop restricting and focusing on the things I can't have and I'm giving up forever, like y'all we're human. Like it's fun to go out and enjoy your favorite dinner. But what I'll tell you, what I teach my clients is you've got to change your language. You know, so somebody's like, well, Becca, I mean, I'm going on a vacation for two weeks. I feel like garbage. I've eaten all this stuff. I do want to come home and start over. I'm like, you don't have to start over. So I tell them, I go, you want to come home this week? I'm going to be intentional on moving my body three days a week. This week, I'm focused on leaning in to the protein and the foods that make me feel energetic. And y'all, that's when your brain starts going lifestyle. That's when it starts going, this is long-term. This isn't for three weeks to get five pounds off, to go to the beach and put it back on in a 24 hour period. And, you know, again, I'm not preaching because I've done all of it, but I know how painful it is. I know how devastating it is and how much willpower and focus. And you go to the grocery store and you dump out all the bad food and all the things. And then to come back and go, you do feel like a failure. You're not a failure, but that's what it feels like. And so to get somebody unstuck from that mindset and that habitual habit and pattern, it's absolutely life-changing. I'm going to say one more thing, then I'll stop talking. (laughs) My, my clients will be like, you know, their goal is 20 pounds, lose 20 pounds. And I just had a call last week and she says, Becca, to think that I thought all I was going to get out of this was losing 20 pounds. And I'll tell you what it does, y'all. It, yes, you want to be fit and you want to look great and you want to get confident and you're going to do that. But how you start to feel the self-belief and the confidence, you literally feel bulletproof is what you feel. And that feeling of the self-love and the self-worth is so impactful in every single area of your life. How you show up in your marriage, how you parent your kids, how you show up in your job, whether you stand up and say, I deserve that promotion, whether you start your own business, do your side hustle, whatever it is, do that fitness competition that you never, ever told anybody you wanted to do, whatever it is, man, the self-belief, it's way more powerful than what the dang stale says. It's absolutely invaluable. Okay. I'll take a break. I'll take a break. Okay. I have to share something with you. Um, Give me a second to write something down, guys. Absolutely. Whew, guys, that was a lot. Just put your notes together. Um, you're going to be surprised. Um, wow, I'm just shocked. Hang on. All right. You know that last thing you said? Yes. That fitness competition that you've never told anyone about. Mm -hmm. It's been on my mind for the last three days. And then out of the blue, Becca said it. So I had to write it down because this is a journaling point. Because A, this is something I've thought about a couple of times and it's not your traditional one. I've got a certain one in mind that makes a female look extremely feminine. Right. 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 Um, that's my goal. But I thought about it. I'm like, I need to, I would like something to work towards. Um, I like working towards things versus, and this is NLP language. I like working towards things versus working away from something. Sure. People have different mindsets, right? And we need to tap into which one it is so we can have that language proper for them. And, and, um, so I find it fascinating how you said that out of the blue that nobody knew about, um, now, now the world knows about, and I actually have to catch my breath because of all of the people in the world, of all of the timing in the world, the fact that this episode was supposed to be recorded two days ago and the conversation could have been completely different. Coincidence? Serendipity? Absolutely not. That is powerful. That is very powerful. So guys, it can be that easy. When you learn to change your lifestyle, it can be that easy. And it doesn't matter your age and your stage. And 
And the cool thing about Becca is her enthusiasm, her excitement, because she's felt the change herself. I know this because I've been there. Um, and I'm like, um, just I feel it. So we're gonna we're gonna go over the four quick questions that I go over with everybody before we sign off. But um, we're also gonna have Becca's contact information, and some of the topics that we talked about today is going to be in the show notes. <laughs> I don't know who follows along, but literally. Oh, yeah. Mom Love or it. dad every day. Um, so I need to send this message. So yes. Um, oh, I didn't send her a message yet. Okay. Hopefully. I don't know what I did. Anyways, this happens sometimes when you're trying to do two things at once after you've taken a break from doing more than one thing at a time. Let things change um and I want to say follow your instincts you know that's what got Becca started on this journey is something inside told her she wasn't happy and she made a change and I know she's willing to share that story at the very beginning on those deeper levels at a different time but we're not going to have enough time today so Becca um tell us quickly how your mindset shifted. So we normally talk about meals, movement, mindset, and your relationship with money, which can be, it's not about what's in your bank account. It's more about stresses around money, how you handle that, what your approaches are, things like that, and, or what's changed since you've changed in that area. So you can share with us your um, feedback on those four areas. Okay, so what's the first one, mindset or movement? doesn't matter the four topics are meals movement mindset and your relationship with money okay so on mindset we'll go there because I feel like that's what we've talked about the most so far um you know the mindset is I think the biggest part of it because again there's so many resources available for what to eat how to you know you guys have all dieted you have lost weight before so you know what works right you just don't know how to maintain it um, and so the mindset shift is huge. The mindset is focused on long-term. It's not this crunch to lose pounds for it, right? Like it has to be focused on the long-term. It has to be focused on when I wake up, like what, how do I want to move my body? How, not what somebody's telling me I have to do to burn 500 calories. Like, what do I like to do so I can look forward to it, right? What are the foods that I like to eat? Maybe you need to switch out some ingredients. Maybe you need to, you know, change them up a little bit. But guys, the reason you can't stick to a diet is because you don't enjoy it. You don't look forward to it. You suffer so you can have this temporary goal. But a lifestyle is about like, man, what can I do? 90% of the time that also works for my body. So that is a huge mindset shift. Stop restricting, stop focusing on giving things up forever. It's never worked before. Tomorrow's not going to be the magical day. You also don't deserve to live like that, right? It takes way too much mental and emotional power. Start getting aware Start getting aware of how you use food in your life. Like, when do you go for the 12 Twinkies, right? Nobody needs more than one Twinkie. Like, and if you say you do because they taste good, that's a story. Like, dig a little deeper and investigate. Learn how you use food in your life, all right? Change your mindset and your approach to food, and it will change everything. Okay, movement. I love this. Y'all, I work out Monday through Friday, sometimes maybe Monday through Thursday, maybe I get four days in and do something I love. I do all kinds of, I love to lift weights. I used to box. I love to spin. I love to do jazzercise. What I'm going to encourage you with movement is find something that you love to do. Do not go against the grain where it's something somebody told you you had to do because if you don't love it. You're not going to keep up with it. Right. So, and then keep it like if you do something for six months and now you're kind of like, I'm not really showing up and I'm not, like, there's your cue that you got to do something else. Change yes. it up Get in a running group. Y'all get some accountability. If you're not getting to the gym or whatever you want to do at home or like you're not following through, you need to get in a class. You need to join two or three friends and meet. You need to build the accountability and rework your mindset. It's all going to go back to mindset around exercise, okay? The other thing I'll tell you, let's say it's not a workout day. Let's say you crushed it five days this week or three days or whatever your goal is. 
Those other days, you need to do five to 10 minutes of something. Go walk your dog, do jumping jacks, do a five minute circuit. Y'all not to build strength or whatever. Again, it's your mindset. It is a physiological change it will change how you feel about yourself. It'll change your attitude. It'll change the food decisions that you make. It literally will just get you on track. And I'll tell you, Saturdays, weekends are craziness here, right? I don't want to do it. I get out of bed. I go get my coffee. I'm sitting on the couch. I'm like, I don't want. And I'm like, I go in my sometimes panties and t-shirt and go downstairs and make myself do a seven minute circuit again, not to get stronger, but to get my dang head in the game. Yeah. Okay. I love that head in the game with fit. Like you're speaking my language and I'm so passionate about that because it is a game changer and it doesn't matter what it looks like. And that's the biggest thing is, is, it doesn't matter what it looks like. The Do big thing too is like, you know, it used to be our cardio, all this. Y'all, you people look at me and not that I look, but I'm saying you can tell I work out. You can tell. And they're like, you must live in the gym. I'm like, I li I don't. And like, I can get in or out in 30 minutes, right? Yes. Like yes. I don't have time or my husband's traveling. I get up and do a full body 12 minute circuit and I'm done. You do not have to work yourself to the bone to be in shape, y'all. That 85, 90% is nutrition. So just know that. Okay. Okay. What's my next one? Wait, Something mindset fun. movement. So you need to do meals and um, your relationship with money. Okay. Meals. And I'm going to focus on the part that people struggle with. So here's the, here's what you're doing. Well, I will tell you 99% of the women that I coach crush it and know how to do well 75% of the time. Okay. It's that dinner time, whatever the hardest part of your day is, right? For busy moms, sometimes it's dinner, you know, with sports and like cooking and all this kind of other people, they travel, they entertain a lot. I want you to think about what the hardest meal, what the hardest time of the day is for you to stick to a healthy meal or whatever you want, right? And then I want you to build a solution for that. Is it order, you know, we have clean eats here. We have factor meals that I order that are delivered to my house. You can do keto, you can do double protein, you can do, right? Y'all, you can take the guessing game out of it. You do what works for you. Is it a crock pot meal? For me, if I have to cook, I make leftovers, right? Because that's what I'm going to eat the next day for lunch. I don't food prep. And now if you like to food prep, more power to you. I just, I don't like to cook. I'm in the kitchen with my kids for all the things. So if I'm making spaghetti or burger patties, I'm probably doing an extra thing of meat so I can have it the next day. If I'm doing meatloaf, I put it in the cupcake tins so I can literally the next day grab two and eat it on the way to carpool, right? So it you don't have to make this big deal. Here's another one, to have protein. You have somewhere, we have like a brown bag. They do chicken and steak pans of protein that you can pick up that are cheaper than you can cook in the store. You really? can go places and buy their protein in bulk. You can go to Costco and get sirloin. You There are, and y'all listen, Hunt me down on social media and I can help you with some of this stuff. But here's what I'm telling you. Don't get yourself overwhelmed, okay? It doesn't have to be hard. There are very simple solutions. If you're ordering pizza, y'all, I guarantee they have a cauliflower crust pizza loaded up with vegetables and enjoy pizza with your family. There's a you know, million ways to do this. Yeah, same. You know what? We did that last night and Tony was surprised. And I'm like, you know what? I am craving pizza I don't want to be in the kitchen even and we do hello fresh and I could care less last night we have these moments we're human right and um Guys, our cottage cheese is like viral right now do oh. a good culture cut it doesn't even taste like cottage cheese promise and it's not that I think it's that for those that saw me there for those that are catching the video or the uh, audio and not the video I literally like made an ugh face yeah she did some people do I, I like I get it if you haven't done it's it it's the texture like, oh, yeah no I love it it tastes like but, cottage cheese. but you know what I just want to go back to the pizza for for one sure. second because it'll yeah. speak volumes to this gluten-free is an option if just make a healthier choice one healthier choice and that's a win that's right Right? Y'all, you don't eat five pieces, eat two, right? Yeah. And, and have something else with it. But here's what you do when you say, 
I really want pizza, but I'm not going to touch it. Is you think about pizza. Look, look at this body language. Like you can't deny it, right? Like that just made me mad because that's what I used to do. I used to say, no pizza, no pizza. And then I would watch everybody eat it. And you feel like you're missing out. You want it, but you can't have it. And what normally happens is you'll eat some crap salad or some something that you don't want that doesn't taste good that's not satisfying you put your people to bed and you circle back around to the refrigerator or the pantry or whatever it is and you do and like you need to be satisfied yes you can find healthier options but guys when you just totally try and eliminate the things that you love you really create Mm, it's a lot more emotional and mental than you know okay where am i that's right that's right That's where I step in. Okay, so tell us a little bit, Becca, what is your relationship with money like? Okay, you want me to be really honest? I'm gonna be really yeah. honest. Yeah, it's please. Not awesome. I will tell you, it's not great. Um, my family, my husband is an amazing provider. I've been a stay-at-home mom for, you know, 10 plus years. I launched this business a year and a half ago. Um, and and I love it and I do well with it. But my money mindset for me as just an entrepreneur and just an individual, that is really a portion of my life that I'm really working hard to reset the self-belief. Um, I believe in myself to do what I'm doing and I believe in myself to receive a certain amount of money. Um, the part that I'm really working on is believing that I can actually turn it in to, to match my goals and my vision for my business and my family and do that consistently. And I am working on reframing those stories and that belief system around money and learning that money is an energy. Money is like truly believing that you believe you're worthy of abundance, Um, and obviously the self-worth thing, it, I mean, there's a common theme, right? This was me with food and my body. And so I tell my clients all the time, I go, you're working on this with food. I've mastered the food, but I'm still working on these same principles in other areas of my life. Can I interrupt for one second? Yes. Awesome. Well, normally I don't say that I just ping pong, but I know you and I are equally passionate, which makes the conversation Oh, take it over. I love it. No, 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 it's good. You had mentioned something. Um, and people lean in for one second because we don't realize this. And why I talk about these four topics, we'll talk about later, but maybe not today. But um, the point is here, you're, if you didn't have your job, if you didn't have your business right now, Becca, that would have an impact on your relationship with money again. Hundred percent, which would have an impact on your self worth. So doing the work around this, the fact that you brought up what you brought up is fantastic because we all go through this. We're not taught this. Our parents' generation thought this was taught in school. My dad is here, so I am going to. Somebody's here, so I'm going to pause this for one second. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm actually going to let you take over, Rebecca, uh, Becca, and I will be right back. Okay. Okay. I'm um, just going to mute myself while I'm you're I'm just going to pick up where you left off. I'm going to pick yeah. up where you left off and go with that. Y'all, so it, she brought up a great point in talking about if I didn't create this business and launch this business a year and a half ago, you know, I wouldn't be working on my personal relationship with money. And that's so true. And this is what I'm talking about. When you get to a place, when you hold yourself accountable, when you want to level up, when you decide that you're ready to get unstuck and, you know, in your body with your exercise, right? It's not just about your body and exercise. It's about the impact and the self-belief that you're creating in yourself. If I had never done that, right, I would never have the courage to launch this business and really have the impact that I do in other women and moms lives. Right. So that's how it impacted my life was to start this business was to believe in myself that I could serve and I could empower and I could teach and I could change other women and moms lives. And that's exactly what I want for people to experience. Yes. The freedom and the self-love and the self-worth, but I also 
want them to gain the self-belief to go next level in their marriage, with their parenting, in their jobs, with their money. I want you to, it will start changing your mindset in every single part of your life. So there we go. I muted myself. Nobody could hear me for a second there. Um, thanks, guys. It actually wasn't my mom and dad. So normally, if you've been following along, you know that I was on a little bit of a medical. So normally, if I don't pick up the phone from mom and dad and mom called during this podcast, they pop over to make sure I'm okay. Right. Um, the benefits sweet of living. Parents. That's so sweet. You know what? Yes, I was going to say the benefits of living in a small town. I moved away for 20 years, so I'm back now. And they've been my biggest advocates in helping me get better because obviously Tony needs to work and like you. So you can imagine the emotional financial journey I've been going through based on what we've been talking about when, you know, my business was at a certain point. My job at the time had let me go. So I had no money coming in as I was mentally figuring out what was wrong with me. Um, right. Hard. It's, yeah. it's hard. And then that's the point. So moments like this, Guys, moments like this, and this is why I think this is perfect for today. You know, today is three and a bit weeks before Christmas, and we've got obligations and we have expectations and we're trying to keep our promises to ourselves. And we don't want to spend money on ourselves because other people need it more. Mm -hmm. Well, do you and your honey really need to give each other gifts? Right. Um, can you buy something smaller for any of your kids? And can you hold on to that money because you don't know what's coming around the corner. And this is what's happening is we're getting older and older. We want to make physical changes. We want to make emotional, mental changes, or we physically need to, we need a coach in our back pocket. We need a therapist. We need a mentor. We need inspiration. We need accountability because more often than not, we forget how valuable we are. We forget to shine our bright light. You know, I was in the shower this morning and that's normally where I do my my gratitude is in the shower. And today I was like, you know, literally um, let me shine my bright light today. And, and that's that's enough, guys. You don't have to go over and above. Your, your level of perfection and expectation is probably so, so exaggerated. I guarantee you, you can scale that down because you're looking for external validation. Once you start to make that shift, and it doesn't matter how you do it, there's resources out there. I'm going to put a couple in the um, show notes. And I know Becca is going to put some resources and some links in the show notes. Go where you feel inspired. Becca's website, my website. I have two quizzes I'm putting up. What's your relationship with money? And... There's a nutrition quiz. I'm going to put links up as well, or I'll just put links to my link tree where you can get that. But in both cases, it's helping you dig in a little deeper to where you're at and what could be different. Um, because honestly, it's up to you to make your world shine as bright as you want to and to think twice about the fitness competition that nobody knew about that somehow got pulled into this conversation. Right. Um, I love that. I'm going to tell that story. I you am. should, Cause I don't really know how I feel about that. I'm being perfectly honest, Becca. I'm kind of like, well, I it's got... scary, right. I mean, it is, that's a big deal. And it is scary because you're like, oh my gosh, like that's a level of commitment. Like, you know, briefly just in your head, like what that takes. And Y'all change is hard. It is hard. And, and I've gone so through so scary. much hard this year that I am kind of afraid of change at this point, right? right? It's kind of like how, and this is what I say in the morning, how can it be easy? Right. Right. Well, and, I don't know that we're ever going to get away from fear. Like we all have fear, right? Fear exactly. of failure, fear of this, like all the cleaning stuff, right? Because fear, if you don't do it, then what kind of mom are you? And what, right? All the things. And I would go to say, when you say, let your light shine bright. And I was thinking about myself, like, that's a great thing. And I'm thinking about, you know, my kids have never, ever walked in my house after school and been like, 
oh my God, this is amazing, mom. Like the house looks beautiful. No, they want me to sit down and have snacks and talk about their day. And I go, you know, a lot of times when I'm holding myself to this perfection, perfection, have all the things done, my light is not shining bright because it's stressful. And it takes away from the appreciation and being grateful of the small things. And it's so easy because our schedules are jam packed and we have all the things and, you know, and all the obligations. Sometimes that is difficult, but that's true. When I am on a workhorse, you know, just task master, nobody wants to be around me because my light is definitely not shining. And I want to say one more thing. You talked about Christmas and, you know, the money here and do you need to spend? I am telling you, if you invest in yourself, if you are needing to make a change, you're like, I need to get healthy. I've had some clients that seriously had some health things like, Hey, I've got kids. Like I, you know, I need to y'all, it is going to come back and be the best gift to your family ever for you to really reconnect with yourself and level up and go, oh my gosh, this is a game changer. You have no idea the example that you were setting for yes. your family. Yes. In you doing that, you have no idea the impact you are having right in your four walls. And, 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 and again, I'm interrupting ping ponging. This is cool. Um, Here's the thing, you are ending generational curses right. by changing that. So you're what's going on? You're breaking the cycle. So how cool will it be to get somebody that you love something that they will use every day and know that you love them? That's right. Right? Also I just, just everybody knows how much I love coffee cups. How much are those? You, they range from six bucks to custom. Here's the thing. Right? We do anything. You can, I mean, you know this because you probably, you talk about money more than I do. But here's what I know. I will give a price objection when it's not important to me, when it is not a priority. We all yeah. know. We go, we don't have time. We don't have time. Yo, the things that are important to you, whether it's watching Netflix or going to the gym, you will find the time to do them. You will yeah. find the time to talk to the people you want to talk to when you tell somebody, I just didn't, my days are crazy. Like, let's be real. You don't really want to have a conversation with them. So when you want to give a price objection, right? If it's collagen or you want to do a facial, somebody's going to find 200 bucks to do it. But a health journey and committing to new habits and change is a hard deal. So we have the time and resources for the things that are a priority to ourselves. And that well, should, those are facts. You know why though? Do you know why? The, and, and I don't know if everybody else knows why. And Tony and I were talking about this last night at dinner. Starting your health journey is tangible. Buying collagen is tangible. Right. It's not immediate gratification. You it can, yeah, exactly. Work. Exactly. So right. it takes a little bit longer to believe in yourself because you have failed on yourself in the past because you weren't accountable. Oh, we can talk all day about this. Listen, okay, we're going to sum this up, guys. I am, we are live today, you no, know, uh, December 6, 2023. And we are, I'm going to be posting this a little bit later today, guys. But if you like this, please share with your friends. Please follow along. Both of our social links will be included. We've tagged each other wherever we can. And um, let us know how we can support you on your journey towards health and happiness. Absolutely. Thanks so much.